Yeah, minimize. Okay. All right. I am back once again with one of the greatest minds in wrestling, not to be confused <laughs> with the brain, Willie Saylor, but uh, but Army Associate Head Coach Scott Green. Coach Green, thanks for joining me, man. Thanks. If uh, if 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 the greatest minds in wrestling includes Willie Saylor, I don't think it's too exclusive of company. So uh, yeah, uh, but I'll take it. Sure. Yep. Yeah. Good. Um, so we're meeting here in the middle of June. Um, mm -hmm. You kind of got some good news, uh, some good brand new news, I should say, for the program sure. here. You guys are hiring a new assistant coach to the staff. Um, yeah. I'll let you kind of break that news here. Yeah, sure. So a lot going on. Um, so we're fortunate to. Uh, be bringing Taylor Lamont on. Uh, it's going to be a great impact for our, our, our lighter guys. Um, Taylor was an All-American a few years back at 125 pounds. Um, he's one of the, the most accomplished uh, Greco-Roman wrestlers uh, in the country, um, but not exclusively a Greco guy. Certainly going to make an impact in, in, in our room um, where we do train all freestyles. So we're excited about having him join us here in, uh, in, in, in a few days. Um, got a good history with Taylor. I coached him in the past on some... Uh, Pan Am and World Team um, type type events, and uh, it's going to be great to to have him coming over into the Hudson Valley. Yeah, I was looking at his wrestle stat before seven years in college wrestling. Like you yep. said, six at uh, Utah Valley, which is brand new coaching staff there. Coincidentally, sure. he spent yep. a year at Wisconsin. Like you said, a lot of Greco experience there. Um, was his Greco experience a driving factor for you guys? Just because it's a little different feel for some people, maybe. I mean, you know, you watch us wrestle, you know, we love to throw underhooks. That's not a surprise. We're not giving away a scouting report. So anybody that can come in and kind of help us with that physical style of wrestling that that we like to 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 put out there is is good. But I just think Taylor's so well-rounded and such a, 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 a great young man. I mean, a lot of people don't know this, but he's in the finals of the, the world team trials and each group is in freestyle a bunch of times too. So it's not just a Greco specialist kind of situation, although we like them too. Uh, but I think he fits the the the, the mold, um, and and he's really kind of contributed a lot to to our guys, and just gives us a great opportunity to add him and keep Fabian Gutierrez and as an RTC guy, and uh, really kind of just start to assemble some uh, some some worker bees and round out the the resources that our guys can access. Yeah, I mean that's a, I think it's a great hire. Like you said, been around the sport for a while, knows the sport very well, yep. and has kind of been on the international scene a while too. So maybe help take America's team to the next level internationally. Um, Love it. No. Uh, yeah. Well, we're starting on that. Uh, it's one of our main focuses. So uh, he's definitely going to jump in and hit the ground running with, with that for sure. Yeah. I do want to talk freestyle and Greco a little bit later, but first I kind of want to go to some other recent news that came out um, mm -hmm. veterans day weekend. You guys have a really cool match with the Citadel, um, the throwdown at Yorktown, I guess yeah. it's, it's on a, a battleship, right? Yep. Uh, so tell us how this came about and, you know, who reached out to who and, you know, how to get set up. You know, I think this is like a Ryan LeBlanc baby um, from day one. And it's going to be, I mean, obviously they've already announced that we're going to wrestle the Citadel, um, which is exciting. You know, a couple of schools with some similarities and, and, and kids that are interested in, in service and, and super high character kids and, and having it with that backdrop is, is, is phenomenal. Um, so I think he's been trying to put it together for a couple of years. Um, and obviously, you know, when you're, you're given that opportunity, just like we were at Campbell last year, um, to, to wrestle down at Fort Liberty, um, this is going to get a lot of eyes on the program. Uh, and it's, it's going to get some focus on some of the things that maybe don't always get focused on in college athletics. Uh, so we are, are, are all in, you know, um, and, and I think, you know, we, we've been lucky. Uh, we've had that. We've had, like I said, Fort Liberty last year. We had the whole thing my first year here with uh, stepping in and wrestling Iowa uh, on, on super short notice. So, you know, these things are are, are just, you know, hallmarks of our program, kind of anytime, anywhere, um, anybody. Uh, and I think that people know that. And when they're setting up events like this, they're like, hey, let's reach out to, to, to Kevin Ward. Let's reach out to Scott and get America's team here. Um, and we're, we're proud to do it. And there's a lot of, a lot of military folk down South Carolina, just like there were last year at Fort Liberty. And anytime you can put on a show for the soldiers, uh, we owe it to them, um, for all that they do for us. Yeah. I feel like it's, uh, kind of fitting that a team so unique, like army West point and a team like Citadel gets to battle in this unique environment, right. Kind of, like you said, gets eyes on people, gets people interested, just thinking outside the box, which is, 
what you kind of have to do at these kind of uh, programs, you guys seem to have a duel like this every single year. Is this going to be a, a annual thing where you're wrestling these kind of off the beaten path duels, or is this just kind of happening and you know, maybe you'll make yeah, it? I think we're always looking for opportunities. Like I said, um, I think it's kind of happenstance this year, kind of wild, but uh, I'm pretty sure we're wrestling American. I was talking to Borelli about it the other day. I'm pretty sure we're going to wrestle them uh, on inauguration weekend um, <laughs> in DC. So, um, <laughs> Who knows what's going to happen that weekend? Uh, but you know, I'm going to be going into DC on inauguration weekend. I'm going to be happy to be doing it with a, a bunch of future second lieutenants. Um, so, just unique stuff like that. Um, the dual meets are, are obviously the lifeblood of the sport um, at the NCAA Division One level. Um, and anytime you can do something that increases that focus, that 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 showcases programs that aren't in maybe the top ten um, right now or or aren't you know, bringing that star power, um, it, it helps, it helps tell the story. Uh, and that's what duels are all about. And that's what athletics are, are about. So I think that element to it adds a little bit more appeal to your average viewer. And, you know, maybe they had a buddy who's in the army. There's certainly going to be some people who have family that, that went to West Point or one of our RTC athletes, Valerie Baker, she trains here at West Point. Her brother is at the Citadel. So there's going to be hundreds and hundreds of those type of, of relationships with, with people who are going to just get a vested interest in a duel like this, like Campbell last year, um, that, that, that increases the exposure for our program and increases the exposure for the sport. Yeah. So let me ask you, is, is this a uh, army coming up with these or is this other people reaching out to you or is it a little bit of mutual guy, you know, programs talking and agreeing on some of these bouts i mean the last couple have been i mean scotty sentez and, and and ryan blanc are doing the work right i mean obviously they've, they've been like in our ear about it from from day one but you know we've we've had other things that we've kind of pitched to people and and they've worked out and i think that you know um i'm not going to take the, the the credit for it i think those guys deserve it because it's their idea but i think aligning with our brand is a smart decision on their part. Um, and it's, it's definitely something that we are exploring too. There's always opportunities to do, do stuff that, that, that shines the program in a good light. Yeah. I, I agree with you about what you said before dual meets are the, the lifeline of the sport. And anytime you get exciting dual meet with two service academies, but you elevate that literally on, on a different type of surface, different environment, I think, get a lot of eyeballs on it, like you said, and it brings exposure to both programs, which uh, who couldn't use more exposure, right? Yeah. I mean, one of the, the I, I know we're going to schedule to talk about this so we can jump right into it, but one of the most exciting experiences you can have is go to an army Navy football game, right. Oh. At a neutral site. And, you know, there are people that are watching that, that don't watch college football all year long and it's not Alabama versus uh, whatever other big time program is out there. Um, you know, if, or Notre Dame or anything like that, although we are um, playing Notre Dame in football this year at Yankee Stadium, which is pretty cool. Um, but, uh, you know, it's it's not that, that you know, semi-pro minor league football. Um, it's it's two good gutty teams that are, are kind of gritting it out and everyone's watching. Um, so I think we could learn a lesson from that and we're trying to um, do those types of things where people can just jump in and say, hey, you know, I mean, we don't have to be watching the Super Bowl. Um, we're enjoying this football game that we're watching, and you can do the same thing with wrestling. Not everything has to be for the national championship. Um, there's other ways to measure success in our sport, and dual meets provide an avenue for that. Yeah, I love when you always say it's bigger than wrestling. You know, like yeah. for example, Army Navy game. It's it's more about it's more than just about the football, right? It's these guys yeah. didn't go to play football. That's kind of like their secondary thing. They came to serve the country do what they got to do. And then football is just kind of how they, how they kind of got there. Right. Same, same with wrestling. And yeah. I, I love, I love that about, about this uh, matchup here. One of our alumni tweeted out last year down in Indianapolis at the army Navy game. He's like, it's a, a field day for recruiting for like Delta force and special forces. There's never going to be like more of a higher concentration of future, you know, special forces, green berets, Navy seals all in one place at the same time. Um, and when you think about it in that context, it becomes a little bit bigger than wrestling. You know, like the guys that are out there winning a one point match or, or staying off their back so that the team score goes the right way. Um, they're prepping for what they're going to do in the future. And what they're going to do in the future is, is, is stuff that we don't want to do um, that's going to protect our freedoms. And, and 
you know, when you think about it in that context, it's a pretty amazing event. Whatever sport is being contested between Army, Navy or the Citadel or Air Force or, or any of those those schools where the majority of the people are going to go on and do things that are much bigger than than what they're doing on the mat that night. Yeah. And that's kind of drawing parallels, like you said, like kind of piggybacking off your point, you know, Navy SEALs, it's yeah, I, I have my job to do, but if I don't do my job, my teammates might suffer, you know, and obviously it's not life and death in wrestling, but it's the same yeah. concept where I have my job to do. And if I don't do it, there's going to be consequences. We, we're going to lose this match, you know? So just mm-hmm. seeing guys step up in that environment and really think like that and outside of wrestling too, it, it, it's, it's really cool to see. No doubt about it. It's a, it's, it's a great kind of training ground for what they're going to be doing in their future for sure. Yeah. So moving on to America's team going global, um, kind of mentioned before we got a few guys and I should say a few guys and some girls um, representing army West point um, and the RTC there um, overseas. We got Charlie farmer. He's going to be in Columbia coming up next week here already for the U 23 Pan Ams. Yep. Um, he was runner up to Max Gallagher from Penn, oddly enough, EIWA slash Ivy league in the finals. Yep. Um, I love Charlie though. Cause he hasn't been a full-time starter for you guys, which, you know, kind of, might have to be hard for him. I'm, he's gotten some uh, starts here and there, but Ethan Bergen seems to be the guy there. And sure. um, so talk to me about Charlie's, you know, his performance last week and, you know, how he just keeps coming to grind day after day, not being, you know, the guy at 125. Yeah, I think it's it's testament to what our program's all about, right? I mean, like, it's great. I mean, I'm going down to, to Columbia next week, taking Charlie, taking Lucas with us. Um, talk more about him later, taking Sophia Macaluso. Who trains with the RTC and it's it's good to have something like that to keep a guy like Chuck focused right um because and, and, and I've always said this in in recruiting wherever I was if your sole focus is being one of the 10 people that represents the team um at the league championships or or you know the prep nationals back when I was at SEM or, or whatever it is you got to get a bigger view of things, right? Um, that's, that's, there's, there's, I told the guys a couple weeks ago, you know, there's 50 guys on the team, right? Um, 10 of you are going to wrestle in the IWAs. So statistically, you probably aren't ever going to start here, right? Um, so if that's an obstacle for you, then, 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 then don't do it, right? Uh, but if you open your eyes and see, hey, I can go to U23s and make a world team. I can go to, you know, jump in in a dual meet and get a big win for the team. Like if you're, if you're a team player and your view is a little bit bigger than just being this guy at this particular time, there's a lot that you can accomplish here. Right. And Charlie's a perfect example of that. He's never lost focus. He's a great teammate. You know, um, he wants to be the guy at the IWA tournament, no question about it. And, you know, um, you, all you got to do is walk in the door of the wrestling room at 5.45 a.m. every day and see him there. And you know that right away, right, um, that he wants to be that guy. But he hasn't let the fact that he isn't that guy yet discourage him. Um, and he's just moved that goal out and taken advantage of things that have been offered to him in the interim. You know, he had a pretty good Vegas tournament last year. It was really his first major international tournament as a, as a U-20 um and he made a round of 12 but he had like a couple of close bouts with really good freestylers and you know he was like okay you know that sucks I almost placed and that's not good but that drove him to the point where he's beaten really good guys um to make the finals of the of the tournament in Geneva um and that doesn't happen if he's not the the, the, the type of kid that he is um because not everybody can do that not everybody can wait for that opportunity and be ready when it presents itself and super proud of them for being able to do that. Yeah. Especially you don't see it as much in wrestling anymore, but more in the other sports, basketball, football, if you're not the starter, you're in the transfer portal, you're leaving. Right. So mm-hmm. just kind of speaks to the character that you guys have. You don't really have anyone transferring out maybe ever. Right. Since you guys have been there, but. Uh, no, usually it's a, it's a, you know, something non-related to wrestling that, yeah. that someone will transfer out. Um, we have really good retention from, you know, our prep school and really good retention year to year, year in, year out with the team. Um, and I think it's because we give guys like Charlie opportunities like that. Um, U23s is a super important tournament for us, um, even though it's different styles. Last year, I made everyone wrestle freestyle and Greco. Um, this year, I kind of didn't make them, but we had a guy wrestle Greco-Roman, first Greco tournament ever, and he, he plays fourth. 
you know? Um, so that that's, it's a super important tournament for us because these guys who are going to be major contributors next year are showing us, Hey, I can compete. I might get crotch thrown a couple of times. I might, you know, lose a Greco situation, but I'm going to be out there and fight and wrestle nine, 10, 11 matches uh, and show you that I can be a guy you can depend on next year. So we really think it's important tournament for us. And hopefully that's starting to show with the results. Yeah. And speaking of results, we'll continue with the uh, U23s. Lucas Stoddard, your, yeah. your heavyweight there, one. He's going to represent USA sure. and America's team at Worlds in October. I think that they're in Albania this year. Albania. Right? Yep. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Albania in late October. Yeah. yeah. The cool thing about um, him. Yeah. He he's 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 got you know like coming in as a plea but heavyweight a freshman um so he he you could see it um at times during the year like this kid's got it you know um and then there were times when he looked overmatched and overwhelmed right and you're wrestling and, and the reality now is you're wrestling 23 24 year olds you know what i mean guys who had six seven years of of college experience and I think, you know, having the opportunity to reflect after going to the NCAA tournament and and not winning a match and saying, you know what, I'm not satisfied, right? Um, and I think he and the rest of the uh, the 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 heavyweights really kind of redoubled their efforts after that um, and said, that's not enough, you know? Maybe if you had told him in the beginning of the year, hey, man, you're going to win the starting job and you're going to qualify for the NCAA tournament, he might have been like, oh, sweet, you know, that's pretty good. Um, and then you actually do that and you're like, well, that's not enough, you know? So he's been, again, you know, similar to Charlie, one of the hardest working kids in the room. Um, he's he's wanted to learn. He's been working out uh, nonstop since then. And you could just see a difference in confidence in him from when he stepped off the mat in Kansas city. So to, to when he stepped, I mean, I'm not going to count Greco because he kind of had some, some not so great uh, moments in the Greco tournament, uh, That's a learning but, experience. <laughs> but, but even that was like a motivating factor, right? Like, Oh my gosh, like I just, that, that was ridiculous. And, you know, um, he gave up one point in the freestyle tournament uh, and just got better every time he stepped on the mat in freestyle, like every single match he, you got a little bit better and that's when you can do that you can grow in a tournament in 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 june in geneva ohio by doing that and the results are are what we want them to be you know we're putting guys on the world team um and he's the first one in a while and it's pretty exciting yeah and just the way he did it too just kind of defeating nathan taylor of lehigh who yep. for lack of a better word dominate him a few times this year in folk style sure. i know folk style freestyle different obviously right but yeah. just that go up and knowing hey this guy's beat my butt before but go out and yeah. you know turn the tables on him like that mm -hmm. really impressive just goes to speak about and i have a note here about his progression from november um yeah. just seeing him as like you said as a plebe freshman coming in like oh yeah he's pretty tough and then you know he's ended up placing at eiwa's above his seed at one of the yeah. deepest weight classes that that there's been in a while there and just shows yeah. how much he's improved from november to march and even until now that's got to be the hallmark of our program, right? Um, Lucas and Charlie, you mentioned Willie Saylor before, like he, they weren't on the big board, you know? Um, Lucas was a, a 190 pounder in high school, you know, like a one-time Ohio State champ, Ben Pazook never on the big board. Um, so, you know, because people see that and they see the development um, that, that we're able to, to engender in our, our troops, um, pun intended, uh, that that they know that they can reach their goals at, at, at West Point. So Lucas Stoddard saw junior year of of high school. No one in the world was writing articles about him and thinking this guy's a future world team member, you know? Um, and Charlie Farmer, probably the same thing. So I think, yeah, I think the, that, that now more than ever, guys are starting to buy into the fact that whatever this kid you know had had some stardom in high school but um high school is high school and and i can go to west point and 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 pass blow blow right past them um, because of the way that things are done there so yeah yeah i just wonder if there's something to the uh you know the the structure and you know schedule that you guys have at west point as students right you have your extra commitments and just knowing you can go through that every day to survive you know i think that probably translates to wrestling it's like yeah. hey i can do these things outside the sport why can't i work my ass off and improve 
inside the sport of wrestling too, right? One huge thing that we have as an advantage, um, and, you know, I, I say this all the time, but like wrestling practice is the best part of our kids' day. You know, it's the thing that they look forward to the most. And I've coached at the college level. I've coached at the, that's not true everywhere else, right? Sometimes you walk in, you're like, oh my God, this is going to be hard practice. It's going to be the hardest part of my day. And you're not looking forward to it as much. Our guys are like, this is it. This is the, the best part of their day. And when you get that feeling and you got 50 guys kind of feeling the same way, um, you know, a rising tide lifts all boats. So people are kind of in there enjoying themselves um they're working hard no question about it but they're so used to to hard work that when it's doing something you love it's a little bit different um than than maybe your, your typical uh, wrestling practice at a civilian school where guys are just like oh my god i can't wait to get out of here drive home and you know play video games or or, or do whatever college kids do um our guys it's legitimately the highlight of their day and i think that's that's part of the success for us because they love being there um and when you love doing something you, you get better at it yeah and um but we're kind of on the gears of world world teams you know we have two gentlemen going we also have a woman's sophia and yep. heading to wrestle for for your rtc side so talk i personally i'll admittedly i not, don't know much about her um sure. so tell me about sure. her and, so Sophia is, and, and, and Valerie Baker are two senior level um, female wrestlers. They all just won senior nationals, um, competed at the Olympic trials. Um, Sophia's won a uh, world silver in the U20 level. Um, and she's taken a unique path. She's local. Um, she's from Minnesink Valley, same high school as Zach Ryder, PJ Duke. Um, pretty good. Kevin Gallagher doing a great job down there, right down the road here. Um, and, and she kind of decided um, when Vale was coming to train here that she didn't want to do the traditional college route, um, that she didn't see that as being her best way to go win world medals. Um, so she's like, hey, you know, I'd love to train up at up at West Point. Um, so she's in our room. She's training. Um, it's funny because, you know, like probably the three the three people that you see in the room the most are Vale, Sophia and Charlie. Um, and they're all about the same size. Uh, and Charlie definitely learned a lot of freestyle from wrestling with those two senior level athletes this year. Um, and you know, she, she, she didn't qualify. She was like third at the last chance qualifier. Um, but she won U23s, uh, and she'll be going to Pan Ams in the worlds as well. And it's a unique path. Um, but one that we think is, uh, is, is going to pay dividends for her down the road. And we're just thrilled to have all three styles kind of represented at our RTC, which is pretty rare, um, I think, in terms of what RTCs offer. Um, and, and we're proud of that. And it's something that, you know, we're, we're going to continue to do. You know, so I, I assume Sophia is kind of the first, uh, you know, guinea pig for, I shouldn't say guinea pig, but, you know, she's going to open doors for other females sure. to come in there at the RTC and, you know, yep. represent you guys on, on yeah. the Right. For sure. Um, with, with Vale, you know, doing well this year, Sophia doing well this year will probably attract some other senior level athletes. And I don't think it's unreasonable to think that there's going to be a girl out there that's going to be like, hey, I want to go to West Point. Um, I want to lead this country. I want to be, you know, a West Point cadet. And while we don't have a, a, a varsity girls team yet, they know that they're going to get quality training um, in our RTC. Uh, so, you know, whatever we can do to help, I think that was one of the things that I'm most proud of of my time at SEM was starting the, the girls program there um, and didn't really just kind of think that that was going to be a cool thing to do. I thought it was like kind of a responsibility or one of the, the teams that has a platform um, and you're supposed to lead. And, and when you're leading, you're trying to lead for, for all sports and all, all, you know, competitors. So I, I don't think it's going to be too long before uh, a high school senior or, or junior comes that's of super high level and comes and says, I want to go to West Point. Um, and we're going to be ready because we got the RTC model kind of down for that. So is um is it maybe in the works potentially to get an NCA sanctioned team on campus, or is it going to be strictly RTC for a while? Yeah, it's going to be RTC for a while. You know, I tweeted about this. I got some hate. Um, <laughs> and and it's it's not anything other than economics and the current state of the NCA right now. I think the I don't know this. I didn't do any like studies or anything like that. But I think if you're trying to start a sport at a school um, that doesn't lack for enrollment right now, um, like West Point, like a, a, a high level school that's got a waiting list from admissions, 
you're going to need to, 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 to pony up some cash to endow that program. You know, um, I know that it's, it's hard. Like sometimes I think wrestling people, they don't like have like calculators or, or, or anything. They just think, well, we want wrestling. So that school should start wrestling, you know, and they, there's, they there's don't a hundred dollars. Like, yeah, yeah. They don't yeah, I mean, People have said that too. They're like, Oh, you know, what a, what a 50 grand donation do it. And I'm like, that's like, not even a coach's salary for a year, you know? So there's an economics aspect to it and I would love to see it happen. And we're obviously going to work to towards that. Um, you know, I think that's, that's something that we can uh, always have as, as, as something in, in the future. Um, but right now it's tough. It wouldn't be, it would be any sport you were trying to, to add at a, at a, at a financially stable division one institution, there's going to be a price tag. Um, and some, sometimes you're going to find people who want to meet that price tag. Um, and we'll continue to work to, to, to do that, as I'm sure other people are doing too. But we're also happy with the, the fact that we're supporting women's wrestling at the RTC level um, and can provide some opportunities for just about anyone who come, wants to come here and wrestle. Yeah, I'm not sure how much you're on the message boards. And I know you're on social media a lot. It's probably yeah. pretty similar to some of these people that have, you know, some of the fans that have open um coaching vacancies at some of these programs oh get coleman scott in there get jordan burrows in there oh, good Lord. Yeah, you know how much know. that's just going to cost to get a guy like that in there and then plus yeah. the facilities and amenities and you know administration that they're going to require for that you know it's, it's not a few hundred thousand dollars it's millions of dollars for something like that right it's millions of dollars there's no question about it it's millions of dollars so yeah, yeah i mean that's that's depressing you know sometimes when you think about it because you want what you want but it's uh it's it's a challenge yeah. Yeah. Fresh off, um, kind of switching back here to NCA wrestling, fresh off all American this year. First one since 2018 yeah, NC, at 174 yeah. pounds. You and I kind of talked a little bit, you know, off camera before he was up at 184 to start the year. Finally made a decision to go back down to 174. Obviously that paid off becoming all American, you know? So yeah. what was that kind of roller coaster like being up and then deciding to go back down? I mean, I think it was just experimenting with things, right? Ben, like, like he he weighed 200 pounds. You know, he could if he if he wanted to, and he is strong. Um, and anyone who's ever wrestled him, you know, he would tell you that. So we never did really thought like, hey, this kid's going to be at a power disadvantage at, at, at 184. Um, but you know, um, we we started out there and 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 see how it looked and see, hey, maybe not, you know, having a a weekly kind of weight cut would would be um advantageous to him and then he kind of wrestled a few matches there and he said you know what i feel like like better at 74 and so we kind of had a little adjustment period while he descended and kind of really hit his stride at the scuffle uh and then it was all 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 smiles from there right um and you know i don't think there's anything wrong with that i think that might happen with some kids on our team next year where we kind of look at um, you got to be mindful of RPI and all that stuff, which, which limits weight changes. Um, but the, you can overcome those obstacles. So I think it paid off. I think, um, you know, having him get down the podium is huge for us. Uh, and, you know, especially for our fan base and for um, recruiting and, and for all of those different things. Uh, you never want to be, and Ben has said this before, like you got to be in love with what you're doing and not married to the results. So, you know, if he loses in the round of 12 or, or something like that, um, the conversation is a little bit different, but we're still super proud of where he came in the four years that he was here. Uh and just the, the sense of pride amongst the alumni and the, the exposure it brings to the program is, is worth its weight in gold. It's a special moment for him uh, and, and his family, uh, which was great, but it also shows the guys on the team, the Braden Basils, the Trey McDaniels, the Dakota Morrises that are, are coming into their sophomore, junior years that they'll look like you can do this too. Um, it's possible. Yeah. It was really cool to see um, army Navy and air force all with, all Americans this year in the same year. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. you know, it's, just, it's just good for programs, you know, like yours and you know, like all the other service academies, yeah. just get someone on the podium and Hey, you come to school here, you get a great education, you get a job, right. And you know, you can still succeed at a high level in the sport. Really cool. Wrestling's got to kind of lean into that. You know, we talked about it before um, with, with these kind of unrealistic expectations for people are always like, Oh, we need a program at UCLA. We need a program at Syracuse. And, and in the meantime, 
you have these little niches that you could be exploring. Ivy League wrestling is so good. And, and that's not the case in a lot of other sports. And that's great. Um, service Academy it could be really, you know, strong teams in, in wrestling. Um, you know, like no one, no, no one who follows NCAA football knows that Johns Hopkins is a, a, a lacrosse power, right? Or some of the hockey teams. Like we need more of that in wrestling instead of just, oh, we need, you know, programs at the, in the SAC. Like <laughs> um, there's so many programs now that are worthy of support um, that expanded into areas that don't have that infrastructure. It's a little dangerous. Um, and, you know, um, we could really do better as, as a sport leaning into the opportunities that we do have. Um, and I think that, you know, getting guys on the podium for all three service academies, that's a step in that direction. I think it's going to be easier conversations here um, come Saturday um, when all three of us uh, can lead with that as, as part of the conversation. It's actually you can, goals. you can reach your goals here. And here's what else is great about a service academy. Yeah. You're actually uh, making my transition easy for me. Cause you know, we got about five minutes left here and huh, sure. kind of wanted to end on, you know, recruiting and, and something cool I noticed about your coaching staff, um, obviously yourself, like you mentioned, you were at a very successful high school national prep, you know, so you kind of have experience there. Um, coach Ward was division two coach of the year in 2014 with yep. Watchwood Baptist, right? And yep. have Jeff Brees in there as your director of development. Um, he was spent some time D3 and D2. Sure. Uh, so I think what I'm trying to get at is you guys have ways of thinking outside the box and using you know, minimal resources maybe to help get a really high um, successful program. You yeah. think that kind of helps with your recruiting and the way you pitch to a school like Army? No doubt. I think it's great having three guys associated with the program with head coaching experience. Um, that I, I think, I don't want to say a mistake, but I think a common approach to assembling a, a college wrestling staff is you have the head coach, and then you have like three like carbon copies of, of the head coach um, and they can wrestle with the team. Um, and I don't think Kevin Ward's vision for the program is, is anything like that. I think he's looking for people to be strong where, where he needs to develop and, 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 and like mesh all those things together. And I think, you know, having guys with head coaching experience who know how to run a successful program um, that helps. Uh Having young guys who we know are going to be head coaches someday. Steve Blyce is destined to, to to lead his own program. And he's, you know, kind of just like in there. And he's like, I came here because I can learn from, from you guys. You know, so like not just picking the best wrestling partner, not just picking, you know, someone who is a yes man, um, someone who you're loyal to, like, like just having – a, a, a coach's office that's willing to challenge each other's ideas because um, we don't all coach the same way, not even by any stretch of the imagination. It's completely different coaching styles and, and, and in some cases, you know, coaching beliefs. So I think that's difficult sometimes for a head coach because you have to maybe guard your own ego a little bit, um, but I don't think that's Kevin Ward. Um, and I think that's why uh, you know, he's been successful wherever he's been. And I think that's why we're, we're headed in the direction that, that we, we hopefully will continue to be in. Yeah. And just kind of wrapping things up here. And, you know, like you said, a few days from now is technically um, open season for recruiting and yeah. my son turns two on Sunday. So he's there you go. 2040. Um, okay. Any advice for me as a parent to help my son kind of get that phone call the first day, you know, what, what kind yeah. of I'm looking for? For sure. Um, you gotta, you gotta love the sport. Um, because if you don't, you're doing way too much, um, to, 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 to just kind of keep up, um, without loving it. And, and I think anywhere I've been, um, but particularly here, uh, a lot of guys love winning, um, and they love getting their hand raised in the sport when they're young. And then they get here and that doesn't happen all the time. And they realize this is a challenge. So if you're a parent of a two-year-old right now, your job is to, to, to make sure they love practice, that they love going um, to wrestling uh, because it's fun. Uh, I know that's kind of cliche now, um, but I think it's important um, all the way up through is that once it becomes a chore, uh, to them, um, that, that, that kind of gives you the finish line. You can see it. 
Um, it might not be that day. It might not be a month from then, but, and everyone goes through struggles. Don't get me wrong. I'm not saying every day you come in and it's the happiest day of your life, but they have to love the sport. So that's like, I think number one, and it seems so simple, uh, but it is the most important thing. Um, and you know, um, just, uh, continue to, if you're looking at a, at a West Point thing, um, academics are going to have to come first, especially when you're younger, and that's got to be a priority. Um, we're not able to recruit 70% of the the applicant pool of, of, of high school wrestlers because they just won't be able to qualify academically. Um, so those two things, I think, um, are going to transition into – and then just find coaches that they trust um, and, and, and enjoy being around. That's the, those are the keys right there. Awesome. Yeah. We're just about out of time here. I just want to say, you know, thanks for the good fatherly advice. I'm going to go. Yeah, go get it. Get my kids start studying and, you know, hit maybe hit the rope ladder or something here too, just to start training here. Well, he's two, so he should be sleeping because recovery is half your training. So yeah, you can get him on the rope ladder, get him on the rope ladder in the morning. Yeah, I'm making the first mistake here. Keeping him up past his bedtime. <laughs> Idiot. Right. But, uh, all right. All right. Yep. Good chat with you, Coach. Really appreciate the time and, you know, good, good things happening at Army West Point. And I'm, I'm here to cheer you guys on. Appreciate it. Okay. We appreciate you, Austin. Thanks so much. Thank you. Okay. Take care.